I think it's your week to start. Oh, okay. I thought I did it last week, but sure, I, I can, I'll do it again. Hello, and welcome back to Mad Men with a Box Live. We're stuck with it later than usual because of, surprisingly, not Jimmy. <laughs> no, Jimmy, Jimmy's been very good about being on time. He's taken his oath of silence. I'm sorry, I had to work. Yes, so we're here later than usual, but we are here regardless. We're back with a, another week of Doctor Who news, plus at the end we review Necromantia. Do we have to? Unfortunately, with this, we we decided so. It would have happened eventually. Better to rip off the bandaid now. Uh, so yes, we've, we've got a whole lot of news leading up to the month. A month away from new Doctor Who, uh, we've got some big finish news, and I, I met a special uh, Jody Whitaker. So I'll be talking about that a little bit later on. I was about to say, if you said I met a special lady, I was like, Chris, do we really need to talk about your love life right now? I mean... Oh, I'm never going to be meeting a special lady. <laughs> <laughs> Given my life, don't have time for that, unfortunately. <laughs> Plus, that requires, that requires effort. Well, well, we've seen your, your big finish videos. We know we can you can give effort. If I, if what time do I have for a girlfriend while I'm painting minis? I can't. That's, that's, that's like that's the trick. That's like that's the trick. That's like choosing like which baby to save in a fire. Obviously, the one I love more. <laughs> what? <laughs> I take it back. You're never going to have a special lady. You're right. <laughs> Thank I'm you. sorry. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> enough about my sad, pathetic life. Let's talk about. Our My pathetic life. Oh, sorry. Pixel's pathetic. No, our shared pathetic life of Doctor Who. <laughs> oh, you mean our obsession that we we keep coming back to? Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> it's an addiction. <laughs> yes. So we should go ahead and talk about. Do you want to go ahead and uh, show off and do your little show and tell, or did you want to? No, we'll do that just before the review. So we'll do something very nice before we get into Necromantia. Oh, that sounds fair. So the first thing we actually have to talk about is a redesign. And no, actually, I, I don't have a link up for that redesign. It's about the Celestial Toy Maker because this was the art that was shown. Oh, so did, they, did they change it? Hmm? Did they change it? Yeah. Now this... This is the cover. I do, I do like the Steelbook one. I don't like the Toy Maker's face. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I can forgive it because the rest of it is cool. It is yeah, yeah. everything else but the face looks cool. It's so much better. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah, once the, the yeah like and then the one. graphic the graphic designers when it comes to these are just like yeah DVD Blu-ray Steelbook like oh. Except for the, the Daleks and color one, I don't like that one. Again, I have it here. I can, like, that's just lazy. It's just a Dalek. The only thing that saves this is the fact that the DVD Blu-ray one looks like shit. It's a that's poorly done. Poor, it's a it's a poorly done Photoshop. So that's the only saving grace with that one is that there exists a worse version of it. That means you have the best. Feel good about that. In quotation uh, marks. <laughs> well, yeah, the Steelbook one is it's very cool. I like it. I, I agree. But that's really a problem with this entire art style. But I'm not ready to go into that tangent again. <laughs> it's really bad. It's really sucky. Yeah, so let's, talk, <laughs> let's talk about uh, Twitter having nothing else to talk about. So they poked Peter Davidson again and asked him about things. And he's like, what? By generation? <laughs> don't know why they did that. Don't know why they did that. I haven't watched Doctor Who in years. Of course you haven't. <laughs> That's fine. But don't, worry, don't worry, Peter. I agree. I don't know why they did that either. <laughs> we don't know why they did that. Um, Doctor Who doing something and then not giving any context or information about it to expand it yeah 
uh, I think there's also somebody that pointed out that he says basically he hasn't seen it. He's just heard about it. <laughs> oh. Which. Another thing. He's got better things to do. He probably heard he's about not, that he's, article he's not like that us. came out. That's right. He's not like us. He's not, he's not a loser. <laughs> um, you probably saw that one article that came out that was RTD talking about uh, in my uh, I imagine all the doctors are by generator. No, yeah, his his, his 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 fan fan cannon thing, which yeah. is like, yeah, that's it's it's not a real thing. Listen, it's, when you it's, were... it's a stupid idea, but it's not real. <laughs> yeah, because like I think I know we talked about this months ago, but he can't say those things. <laughs> Yeah, because then he people are going to take trouble. it as as gospel, and think that's what, what what what's actually in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that that's this is really a nothing burger. You want to talk about a something burger? Sure. Two for two. This has never happened before. Okay, it has happened before. Uh, what yeah I saw I saw that bait post I'm like there yeah, this is fake this is a fake bait bait post there's never been more than two companions I'm like nah this is not even good bait <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no uh, they've gone ahead and they've confirmed that for season two of uh Doctor Who uh, there's going to be two companions RTD himself said that Ruby's story it's Continue. it's a two season it's a two season long story. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah, hoping. So. I'm yeah. hoping, uh, considering what um, I've seen some people talk about, I'm hoping that uh, that Verada's character is not from present day. I heard that too. Uh, I I heard there's a, a lot of people theorizing that, and I hope so too because I'm so tired of the modern day companions. No more. Sorry, Ruby. No more. <laughs> yeah, like if we're not gonna have like an alien companion, have like a companion either from like the far future or the past. I don't need modern day. I don't need a companion that that's gonna be like, hey doctor, look at this video. It's called Skibbity Toilet. <laughs> no. Yeah, the Belinda leak, that's what it was. Freaking uh, Ishan says the last time we had two female companions is after Adric dies. Yes. Oh, so that means. <laughs> I, I was going to go with great things happen or happening, but no, it wasn't really great after Adric died either. It was just like Adric dying was great. <laughs> I'm sorry, Adric. No. <laughs> but no, yeah, this is I the. I um... if, if he was right. I should have that as a clip on in here. Yeah. But no, this is the their official announcement of uh Verada Sethu joining for the second season, airing in 2025. Uh we've already known about this, but this is them finally. This is them no, it's it's them properly confirming it. Well, not properly yeah. confirmed, uh, uh, more of an official capacity, but also giving more information that it's she's not replacing Millie Gibson. Yeah. I think uh, RTV bringing up, he says right here, it's quoted from the article that this is pulled from, uh, not leaving, not at all, ordered for two years of a series uh, with Disney Plus, and they're delivering the two years, and the Ruby Sunday story goes those two, two years. I think it's down here. It's unfortunate that these things make the papers. It's a very difficult position because you can't answer rumor we can't try and pin it down as the internet will just run away, either misinterpret or decide the Princess of Wales has been replaced by four cats in a wig. What I said. It's what I said forever ago. He's just not addressing it because it's nothing that's been confirmed. Nothing was confirmed then. Now it is officially Still, addressed by Shooty, Shooty did a little thing. I mean, when all this, like, um, the whole rumors oh, that oh. Millie was late, shoot, he put up that uh, Instagram post. 
like in support yeah. of Millie. Not really saying anything, but, but he still didn't supporting. say anything. He just gave a heart by uh, Millie Gibson's name, saying "My Millie." Uh, Sean says the slander that was said about Millie. I feel like he should have at least said something about that. Yeah, like I think the fact is like. You know this is not true. You can't just say something and just give the middle finger to these to these gossip mags. Been like, yeah, you're wrong. Fuck you. Like, here's the proof. Here's the here's the tea. Here's the receipts. Wow, gossip mags wrong. Wow. I don't know. I just. It, yeah, I think the just, problem is the lack of him saying anything, and the fact that this has this this happened, quote, happened before. We don't know the full details about the whole Christopher Eccleston thing. Like it, that's why I feel like he should have said something because it doesn't look good that there was the possibility of history repeating itself. I, uh, I still I. I saw people looking more for that than it actually being there. Yeah. And, yeah. I think that, still... yeah, I know that. And the thing is the gossip mags are obviously wrong because the fact that we already have, we have behind the scenes footage of Millie Gibson oh, working on the too. second season. So their whole thing of like, Oh, she's just there for the first season. It's like, no, we've actually seen her filming for season two. Uh, she's like, uh, Sean mm. says, uh, uh, adds she's like 19 as well the first lead younger than me yeah, yeah. i think it's the, the fact that yeah she is she's young um and this is her I, th I would say this is her this is the thing that's brought her into like the big spotlight especially with it with what Doctor Who being streamed, people, are, people in America are rushing to watch Emmerdale. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> the the worldwide no, like, phenomena. But no, like, <laughs> but yeah, like this is the thing that's kind of like not really propelling her career, but putting her in the spotlight, especially with the whole Disney Plus deal. And then you have all these gossip mags throwing slander at her, and only essentially in the public only one person supporting her through this at least publicly but even then he didn't s he posted that as an instagram story that lasts one day <laughs> yeah i think you're throwing far too much acclimate on uh, on that one post because he posted that on it as an instagram story and that disappears it's it's not to say that he was taking it back, but it's still. I don't know. I I've said multiple times. I still think Russell should have at least said something, even if it's just like, yeah, this isn't true, and then just went on with his day. Do you do you think that maybe while because this was going on while they were still filming and they are technically still filming aren't aren't they yes yes because we yeah. actually have some leaked things we'll talk about um in a minute um they're still filming russell isn't as vocal as he was during the 60th i think it's because they're they're working on doctor who <laughs> because at the time of the 60th, he was fully there. He was saying things every other day about everything. And then as soon as the 60th was over, not even the Christmas special, it didn't matter. He went radio silent and they've been working, working, working. So maybe his focus has been on the show. He's been away. I don't know. Because it's it just feels it's different than how it was that's earlier true. last year. That's true. Because they had already finished filming the 60th at the time that they were, you know, doing it. And then they finished se season one. Yeah. Okay. Enough about this, because hopefully we'll never have to address this drama again. Yes. He's now uh, said something. We can now stop. <laughs> hey, 
Entertainment Weekly. And actually, I think it's Entertainment Weekly that uh, had the articles that we're addressing. Um, yeah, there, this is the nice little mobile cover that they have. And him in, <laughs> pardon me, a kilt. Another kilt? I like this kilt. I'm pretty here. sure it's a kilt, yeah. It is a kilt. Not a big fan of the jacket, but the kilt. It's soft. Okay. It's Fucking Milan fashion show expert over here. <laughs> Actually, he does have a big photo shoot with many different outfits. Um, yeah, he does. In that, I can't find anything about the so uh, the Sonic. Yeah, so the oh, I should have I should have saved it earlier, but. Someone did take a closer like picture of it, and it has a yellow casing design on it. Yellow and black. Yeah. Instead of the blue and yellow. Oh, so, I thought it was blue and silver. With a little bit of gold, I think. Or is it blue it has, and gold? It's blue, gold, and silver. It's all of it. Yeah. It's it's the sixth doctor coat of sonic screwdrivers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I think I'm now. Like, I, I think I'm now in the territory where it's just like, do we really need so many designs? Maybe like it's out, a series. I think too. out. I think outfits. Maybe there are outfits I like. There are outfits that make sense to times, but like for the Sonic, do we really need like a? This seems more. This seems like having it having like multiple like cases. Seems more like um, we need this for toys. I well, yeah, that's probably what it is. And you know what? That's a that's a selling point. I'm not going to lie. It is. Yeah. Because um, it's but, like I. It seems such a trivial thing to give like the Sonic like multiple different cases when it's. <laughs> How many do you know how many like tenth Doctor Sonic Screwdriver toys came out? Slash ninth Doctor. A lot. I don't know. A I know design wise there is there's technically two designs. Two base designs. I don't two know toys. Designs. Then there's the one with the Journal of Impossible Things, uh, and you could write on it. It had a little pin. Actually, that's the one I have. It has a little pin here on the bottom. And this works as a black light. Ah. That's yeah, that's I was gonna idea. I was gonna say I'd feel like if you were gonna make it a pen, you'd make the light part the pen. But okay, if it's also a black a little a little black light as well, okay. Yeah, because it's invisible sense. ink that's in the pen. Yeah, it was there there's a lot that I think I'm just hoping that it's season two. Really, I can't imagine. Oh well, this is the one episode that we have this, and then we're switching to another one, and then another one. And that would be ridiculous, unacceptable. You should regret. I it. feel like it's it's such a pointless thing to have. It it, it really it really just it does scream toy. Buy the toy, and you can swap out the cases. Well, which I feel remember. like, which I feel like for me, that's the last thing i'm going to think about with a sonic screwdriver toy <laughs> i'm going to be more interested in like actually like using it one of my favorite things that i never got actually i could still technically buy it was the one that you could craft your own and it had oh pieces. yeah the mix some of yeah, them the match one, yeah. some of them were similar to pieces from the doctors but they were all different so you could build it into your own. And then there was one that was like a temporal shift sonic screwdriver. Cool stuff. Cool stuff existed when I was a kid. And I didn't get it because I was poor. Yep. Same with me. Either poor I just, or I just didn't know it existed. I knew it existed, but I was too poor. Damn it. <laughs> um, next, it's another outfit. Look at him. He's not a dab one. He has another one. I'm starting to sound like Jimmy. No. <laughs> he has a bowler hat, a briefcase, and an umbrella. He looks suave. I he will say that. He looks so suave. But he looks I'm so getting. Cool. I'm now. We haven't even got the first season. Um, he's not. You. He said in the video. I didn't bring up the video. 
Shooty recorded a video for Entertainment Weekly going through the history of each doctor. Um, yeah. And he said one of his favorite things about his doctor is that he has so many outfits. <laughs> he loves that. And you know what? That's fine. See, I was originally fine with it, but now we're getting so much, and we haven't even like got this his first full season two. yet. This is season I know two. it's season two, but even then, with season one, we've got like multiple ones going off the trailer. That's fine with me because I'm he's... hoping it's only when he goes to like, like errors in the past. Okay. So I don't know. I don't think y'all see that his doctor outfit really isn't that great. <laughs> it's really what the not. first one or the or the the uh, the main one now? <laughs> you know the first one is a literal dumpster fire in my opinion. Brown on brown on white. I'm oh, sorry, on orange. It's it's horrible. It's I don't think it's terrible. Though. It is it is it is color coordination doesn't work. I don't think it's awful. When your pants guess- match your coat, there's a problem. Especially when it's a long coat. When it's a long coat like that, it's a problem. Now I am being a long fashion show here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but his main one is the better one, obviously. Yes. It's it's much better. There's more color, more vibrant. But you know what's better than that? All these cool outfits. <laughs> I mean, not a, I'm not disagreeing with you. It looks good in them. It looks great. You just you just want that main doctor outfit over and over. I'm starting to sound like I'm starting to agree with Jimmy. Who knows what Jimmy thinks anymore? <laughs> When's the last anybody heard of Jimmy? Yeah, who is he? <laughs> Jimmy? Jimmy who? Is he Jimmy, silence? Oh, yes, my favorite show, Jimmy Who. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, speaking about things that <laughs> don't exist. Yet. <laughs> Yet. Yes, because he's back and he's unbound. And you can see who's that? It's David Bradley. And he's yes. going ahead so, and giving his speech one day. I shall come back. This is because Big Finish is going to be releasing a new line of First Doctor adventures called The First Doctor Unbound. And it will be starring David Bradley and the rest of his uh, Adventure in Time and Space crew. Sorry for Yes. So you know. we've known about this. This was yeah. a uh, something that was rumored that they were doing, that they were... Because, no, when they first cast casted Stephen Noonan to take over from the first Doctor Adventures, and, uh, the thing was Nicholas Briggs said, we're not done with David Bradley. Like, David Bradley will still do first Doctor stuff. It's just, just for these stories, with this companion, Stephen Noonan will be the first Doctor. And I kind of like that. I like that idea. It's okay. Uh, just have a different actor as the, as the first Doctor for, like, different quote-unquote errors. Um but this was the thing that we've known about that they were going to do Unbound First Doctor, but it's with the Adventures in Space and Time cast. Um, I'm happy that Unbound is at least still continuing in some capacity. I'll yes. definitely check it out. They've announced it like over a year in advance. Yeah, 2025. And I feel like, hmm, I, 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 they only did it because it was, it was his birthday. Happy birthday. So um, rather than just put everything of his on sale to say, hey, yes. it's his birthday, you can get him a birthday. Wow, another, another big finish sale. It's like I'm visiting EB Games. <laughs> <laughs> Where the sales never end. Man, we should have grabbed, grabbed up those... Uh, First Doctor sales, now that I think about it, because there were probably a ton. I'm no. only missing one. You're only missing one? Since when? Of, like his, of his First Doctor Adventures box sets, I'm only missing one. Since when? Originally, I I you had. only had, like, two. I think I got some during another sale. And then you gave me a code for one, because one of them was on, on sale 
via the um Doctor Who magazine, right. I think. So I got and that I one. Have a subscription that I tried to get rid of, but Apple wouldn't let me. And I'm like, okay. I just yes. need I need to read it more to make up for it. <laughs> yeah. Um so I think they said, and it was also fitting with the rumors, it's gonna be like essentially based kind of off the Peter Cushing films. As the as David O. o, o Mahoney says, uh, the Peter Cushing feature films of the 1960s were our stylic, stylistic inspiration here, the lighter tone, the spirit of high adventures, the true technicolor nature of the storytelling. We want all of these adventures to have the bank holidays or Sunday afternoon feeling. So they're essentially doing what if Doctor Who, DR Who, um, but with the with the the the, the cast of adventures in space and time and essentially the characters from the doctor Who tv show such a wonderful cast an exceptional creative team we have created a time fracture leading to a separate universe it might not be canon or is it dun, dun, well, dun. it's unbound so it's not <laughs> i know i know that's what they said right who's, there uh, who's writing it uh... if you click on the actual doctor Who, the first doctor unbound I don't know if we have that information yet. Information. Oh, uh, production credits, I mean. Yep, 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 yep. Written by L. R. Hate. I'm not familiar with that writer. We're going to find out live together what they've done. Contributions. Nothing. Okay. That's their first one. Okay. Um, or so far, is it a pen name? Hmm. Who knows? But I'm 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 interested. Although it says it says first volume, so it seems like this might be an, an actual just series on its own. Number discs two duration one hundred and twenty. Only two hours. Hmm. 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 I'm kind of fine with that. I'm fine with that. My only kind of my only kind of gripe is that I always always wished kind of that they would do a series. I don't know if they have a problem with. Any rights or anything, but something based on Doctor Who, not Doctor Who, the Peter Cushing Doctor who. who, Peter Cushing, the actual man named Who. Uh, L. R. Hay is a woman, uh, according to Ishan. Uh, what has she done? L. R. Hay, writer. Uh, L. R. Short for Lynn Robertson, apparently. If this is the same one, nice. I'll have a look at Goodreads. That's a really good name. Both are uh, like as a writer's name. L. R. Hay is, is a really good one, but uh, seems to mainly be known for like kids' books. It looks like just going off the covers. Well, I mean, that would make sense, like they said. A lighter doo -doo 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 kind of tone. <laughs> That's their goal. Yeah. So you'll definitely expect us to check check this out and review it next year. <laughs> hopefully, we'll be hopefully, by, hopefully by then the Fugitive Doctor and Call Me Master series will also have been released. Don't we? We already have a release date for a future to Doctor. Do we? I, it's been so long that I've forgotten, and probably Big Finish has as well. Time to go to Fugitive. We're doing it live. Fugitive Doctor One releasing available January twenty twenty five. I can't remember about Call Me Master. Call me. It's not Call Me Master. Was the one was also not February. Yeah, but that's the one they didn't say anything about. They didn't say anything about. The I feel other like movie. I feel like that's just, just an arbitrary. I feel like that's an arbitrary date because they they always put that as like, but, as an arbitrary date unless they the, actually officially announce like, yep, it's coming out this, this month this year. But they didn't. It used to be scheduled to be an. It said TBA. Oh, and then I guess it is they, February then. Yeah, they they added these later. Don't you don't you remember like no. sixty episodes ago? <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited all around. Uh, last thing to talk about. All right, I'll let you talk about this because I got to go to the restroom. So entertain wow. them. 
Are you entertained? Uh, Shurigawa says that. He would be so sad if he never faced a dog. And I would too. I don't care what Chris says or Jimmy says. I like Daleks. I don't like Daleks, but I like Daleks in my Doctor Who. They are going to make another appearance. It's going to happen. It's just going to take time. It's going to take quite a bit of time. And I'm wondering if uh, they bring back the Imperial Daleks. I, I think they should bring back the Paradigm Daleks. The Paradigm Daleks for where it's at. If you watched our review, because we reviewed the 11th Doctor Chronicles in the last box that brings back the Paradigm. And I love the paradigm. A lot of people did not love the paradigm when it was truly one of the like neat things. Speaking about things that are like toys, those Daleks with their multicolored, they're absolutely, they were absolutely trying to sell toys. If I could find those action figures online, I would probably get them because I love the Dalek paradigm. Love the Dalek paradigm. Love it. It's amazing. Oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah, Shudi's saying he wants, he'd be angry if he never gets to face a Dalek. As long as it's not season one. Season two, man, maybe. I feel like every every doctor has to at least face the Daleks. Although, technically, not counting expanded material, eight never did in his only tel televised appearance, or well, at the time. The Daleks were in it, but he didn't face them. The TV movie. You hear them. They don't sound like Daleks, but they're Daleks. Technically, the only Doctor that we've never seen with a Dalek is the Fugitive Do <laughs> Doctor. Uh, yeah, that's also true. That wouldn't work, though. Because... I mean, yes, it would, because would... remember that... But the Daleks would, wouldn't know it's the Doctor, because... I feel like they would ride around it thinking it's like a future incarnation. This is the future. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Right before Night of the Doctor. That's right. That's right. Ashan is bringing that up. The Daleks were there. I guess. So he faced them. Boom. I guess. But was that in the TV show, though? Because remember, every, every Doctor except 3 and 9 have faced Cybermen in the show. Well, they, had to face, they, they had to face Cybermen in expanded material. But the third Doctor faced the Cybermen and the five Doctors. That's still on TV. Technically. Technically. But not during his own run. No. And then... He did in a promotional... <laughs> in promotional pitches, but not in his actual run. <laughs> and then Nine gets one of... In expanded material, he gets one of the best Cybermen stories in that. Gosh, that's true. Really good. Yeah, Daleks, they'll come back eventually. They'll always come back. But until then, no. Show and tell time? Yeah, show yes, and tell yes, time. Yes. We, and then we, I have story have... time. Story time! I'm going to make myself really small. How about that? So that way, you, you'll... There we go. <laughs> nope, let's swap it out. We're going to make you the big boy. Look at you. <laughs> so, uh, now. Went to a convention recently and bought some Doctor Who stuff. So I got myself a little a little chameleon art. Ah! I'm hearing voices in it. It's pretty weird. Don't open What's it. That? What's that? Kill everyone. I should kill Pixel? I can't. But I should? 
Whoops. Please. <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> what, uh, what do you think? I'm going to stop you? That's that's very sad. It's very <laughs> sad of you to say that. But no, I also got these. The, the, the Titans vinyl figures. We're going to open them, see what we get. Zoom it live. God, I can't even open it. Oh no, here we go. There we go. Got a little little first doctor. Very fitting that we talked about him. Very fitting. Alright, last one. Blast. Last one. Thank you. Got another bloody Baja blast. That's sickening me. God, these packages. Jesus Christ. Oh, hey! Two. One and two. <laughs> In succession. What? Yeah. Oh, One I'm sorry. Two. The hat threw me off. Yeah, that is two. Don't you know his very famous hat that he wears in every episode? Fake fan. <laughs> Fake fan. Don't gaslight me. Get out of here. Fake fan. Bring Jimmy back. <laughs> I didn't send him away. I mean, he's in the group chat. <laughs> he just never shows up. Uh, oh, Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. But no. Uh, but main one. Story time. So the convention I went to was Supernova. It's one of our big conventions here in Australia. And for Melbourne and Gold Coast, for her first time here, was the 13th Doctor herself, Jodie Whittaker. She would only be here on the Sunday of both conventions. So I went to both days anyway because I was there to meet other guests. Um, Karen Fukuhara from The Boys and Emily Bett Rickards from Arrow, which Pixel really loves. I have a lovely I'm relationship with Arrow. Oh, so do I. I have that with a lot of the Arrowverse. It's like, man, it used to be fun and good. Then it Don't remind me fun. about the Flash, you son of a... Oh, Flash was like... It, it, was, a lot, it was a lot sort of that. Because it was like... Oh, and then it was slowed down a little bit. And then as then, soon as... They, Everybody was begging, no more speedster villains, no more speedster villains. And they gave the thinker, and everyone hated the thinker. I didn't hate the thinker, but everybody else did. And so then it plummeted because yes. it's just a spiral into hell. We are yes. the Flash. We are the Flash. But anyway, um, so I went uh to I went to the Gold Coast. For Supernova there, that was the uh, second convention uh, following the Melbourne one. But I did see online people's um, pictures of at least the Sunday, because Jody was there for the Sunday. And it looked very busy, <laughs> at least for her. For her, it was very busy. I saw the lines for the autographs were about like, it was like seven lines long. And that was just probably at the table there it could have been way longer but um so approaching sunday uh it's it's now it's now sunday about like 30 minutes away from the convention because I, I stayed down at the gold coast uh for the night for the two days um i decide well i already have a i have tickets booked for a later session for photos because i thought i knew it was going to be busy that is, I decided, you know what? You know, fuck it. I deserve this. I work hard. I earn this money. I'm My bank's going to regret it. My bank account's going to hate me. Screw it. I'll do one for the first session as well. So I went to go get two photos in two different sessions because I still had other st stuff I needed to do on the day. So but the thing is, um, Jody's first photo session is when it opens like directly when the convention starts. Wow. So I walk I walk in and I get I get ready to go to join the, the lines to get in. Um because what I what I got was a what's called a super queue pass, which means I 
get priority in lines, priority for autographs, photographs, et cetera, et cetera. They used to have a VIP one, but I think because it costs so much, they just got rid of it. Or maybe it was, uh, they did have it and it just sold out. I don't know because it's, it's a, it was a very expensive for VIP tickets. Mine was pretty expensive as well. It was like 250 for Super Q, but it's worth it because I don't want to wait in lines anymore. I did that my first two Supernovas and it was hell to wait in those lines. So I I go into the convention. I go to get ready to join whatever line to go in, in through the entrance and I get stopped. I get stopped by a staff member who asks, hey, do you happen to have um, a photo with Jody? Uh, do you have a ticket for the 10 o'clock uh, photograph sessions? I was like, yeah, I do. It's like, oh, okay. Um, you need to turn around and join that huge group of people that you just passed. Because I noticed that there was just this huge group of people. I just thought maybe that it's just, just a random huge assortment of people just there. They're not getting ready to line up. No, that huge group of people were everyone there for the 10 o'clock session. So they actually let us in through a one through one of the exits so we could actually go get ready straight up. So before the conven convention opened up, anyone that had a 10 o'clock session photograph all got all got in early. And I go in, not even 10 o'clock, and the line is filled up for us, all the super queues, and there was also a separate ticket called the Gallifrey Experience where you got priority just for Jody. And I was tempted to get that, but I'm like, yeah, I'm here to see other people. So I don't think it'd be worth it for me. So super Q and Gallifrey experience. We all got in early. The entire line was filled. And then we look over and then there were, there were still several lines of people still coming in the whole little area that they had for photos was filled. And there were still people coming in to, to line up. Uh, so we get in, it's like, you know, Jody's here. No, make sure you got all your tickets. Um, there's, she's got, she's got a few requests and all that. Like she'll take photos with props. If you have pride flags, she'll only take photos with pride flags, not any other flags, just pride flags. That awesome. Based. Love that. I'm not being sarcastic. Like, okay. Yeah. Pride flags. Unless it's part of your costume because someone had it as part of their costume. So it's like, okay, it's going to be in the photo anyway. Um, no hugging and all that. So, you know, typical. Um, no hugging? Yeah, you couldn't hug her. Which is weird because I think I saw a few that were close to hugging. I don't know. Like some guests will like That's be really, okay with that. That's really weird. Um, I, it's I weird don't that they have a lot. It's weird that it's weird that they requested that, but I think I've seen a few where they did. She was hugging, so unless she, uh, Ashan says she hugged Crispy. Yeah, so bastard. That's... I'll talk about Crispy later because, but um, you know some it, it they did mention that, but I think you know some guests will say okay, it's fine, I'm okay with it. I think it's mainly because I think my, my, they still um... it's still it's still a holdover from like COVID. Oh well, y'all. It, it, it could it also it could also possibly be, um, uh, maybe some guests aren't they don't want to be that close. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, but anyway, I'll, I'll I don't have much experience with uh, getting photos. I've I've never taken a photo with a celebrity really. Um, but my my mother, uh, she went ahead. She paid for. We went to a horror convention, and she got a picture with Bruce Campbell. Um, oh, nice. And she was incredibly nervous, but he was like, "Oh, come on, get get it, get in the photo. Go ahead. There's a camera. Wraps his arm <laughs> around her, full on. She she almost died right there. But yeah, no, it was it was a good experience. It was a good day. But yes, so I go in get my photo i'm in the line the line's moving i put my stuff away because i don't want my bags in the photo obviously and then there's jody see jody there and i'm just like awestruck 
Okay, there's like, okay, it's your time to get the photo. You can head on over next to her. She says like, hi. And I'm like, oh, hey, hi, how, how are you? Like all that. And then I got my first photo. And I cannot tell you just me being the sad, cynical man I am, how much Jody is just and the embodiment of just happiness, just pure joy. Because I overheard, oh, no, someone told me that they overheard from one of the staff members. She only just got to the Gold Coast the night before. Like, um, there's not even like she was here for a day and just like rested. She only just got here the night before, apparently. Because apparently she went back to the, she went, after Melbourne, she went back to the States for something. And then came back down here. I don't know whether, whether that's true or not. That's just what someone told me that they overheard. But no, like meeting jo Jody, just pure happiness, pure joy. I'm like, oh my god, this you this saw is amazing. Q and A too, right? I saw you take pictures. Yes, I'll, I'll get I'll get to that as well. Um, so after that, I'm like, okay, I'll go line up because at eleven o'clock she'll be there to do autographs. I go to line up, and two thirds of that the the lines, the, the waiting area at the table already filled. So I got lucky that I got into that queue area because like after that, after she got all the photos done with everyone, the lines for the autographs overflowed to a separate section. That many people wanted to go straight up to get autographs with Jody. Um, I originally had planned to get, um, I could find it. Oh, there we go. I originally was going to get this signed, the 13th Doctor Magic card. Mm -hmm. I said, no, I don't want to get it's. It's a bit small. I want a bit something a bit bigger. Be signed. So I just grab one of the, grab one of the prints to be signed. Um, meet Jody again, and she she asks, oh, did you, uh, did you have to like travel down here for the convention? It's like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, I'm I'm actually for, like from up north. I'm from like north. I'm like about roughly an hour away from here, and she's like, "Oh, you're from up north." And it's like, "Well, you brought you definitely brought the sunshine with you." And I'm like, "Ah, <laughs> so nice of her to say that." <laughs> and I got my autograph to Chris Jody Whitaker, two hearts. Very nice. So I go about the rest of my day doing the other stuff, getting spending my money on merch for myself or getting gifts for friends. Uh, two o'clock is when she would have her panel and I go there. Every, there's people already like I, I get there at about maybe 30 to 40 minutes beforehand and there are people already lined up. Yeah, of course. they are. Um, so I get in one of the lines, it reaches two o'clock. We all get shuffled in and who do I see? I look to my right, sitting down there uh, with his partner in his, I think he was wearing a cap is None other than fellow Australian YouTuber, Crispy Pro. I'm like, <laughs> hey, it's him. I didn't know you were going to be. I kind of had a feeling you'd be here, obviously, but I didn't know you were going to be here. I'm like, hey, it's, it's Crispy. Um, so the panel starts. Jody comes in. Um, various different questions, for, obviously, from... Uh, from the audience uh it was a bit of a mix not all of them were doctor who some were about like attack on the block some were about like um broad church uh yeah some were from broad church what some was some were from the show she did after doctor who called one night which was filmed here in australia mm -hmm. so obviously a lot of people want to talk about that it's like you came here to film something and um but yeah she had she had a and she recounted how she got her uh, the, the audition process to be the, the to get the role of the 13th doctor because you know as we know chris chibnall wanted her to do that and when she heard that chris chibnall was taking over she wanted to be the master and he said oh actually kind of got another role in mind for you would you like to be the doctor and she had to go through i believe she said she had to go through three rounds of auditions to get it and she eventually obviously she she eventually got it um She's talking about uh, somebody asked her, "Did you take anything on like from your last day from the set?" Uh, she said, oh, "Yeah, I took. I got. I took my outfit. 
I took the uh, the the prisoner outfit, which um actually didn't know. You know how in the prisoner outfit there's like a whole lot of numbers and like mm-hmm. random like squiggly like words and stuff. Um, she told us the the numbers are actually dates that are important to her. I, like, I didn't know that. That's a nice little like bit yeah. of trivia that I find, found out. It's, it's a very personal thing for Jody uh, on that outfit. But she uh, recounted when her and Amanda had their, had their, I believe, their last scene in the TARDIS. So they decided to take some stuff from there. Like uh, Ma- Mandip like ripped out this like ball thing from the floor of the TARDIS. And Jody took the little mini TARDIS that spins on the console. Oh yeah, then, a little. Yeah, but then she overheard them saying they had to do, they had to film like some scenes of like no one in the TARDIS, and they didn't know that. They're like, "Oh, we just took some stuff from it." So she, yeah, so she believes they did some very clever editing to put those things back <laughs> into the shots. Um, uh, she also. She also talked about saying that she she really wished she got to face off against Missy. Oh, though she yeah. she wanted to um, be in be in scenes with Michelle Gomez, which I would I think would have been great. I mean, it's Michelle Gomez; like anything she's in is f- fantastic. Um, and then we get to questions. So some more questions. Obviously, someone asked, "Would you do Big Finish?" And she said. Yeah, do I do I contact them? Do I co- do they contact me? No, I'd like to do do big finish in the future. I'd like to do no, no. Myself and Mandib would like to would like to get back together, do some big finish, possibly. So that's Nick Briggs, Jason. <laughs> get on they're it. Not, <laughs> probably a little too expensive. They're hot. A off little, the yeah, definitely a bit, uh, definitely a bit too expensive. Um. Otherwise, uh, they would have uh, Christopher Eccleston with Billy Piper. <laughs> that's not true. That's true. And maybe you could fi- maybe you could finally convince Christopher Eccleston to do an actual multi doctor story. <laughs> you can't. You won't. Um, you can uh, be with Jody. She's your favorite. And um, no, someone asked the of the you know the typical like who's your favorite doctor, and she said, "Well, if it was classic." Sylvester. Uh, but then she said, well, you said any doctor. So um, she's like, I would have to say Joe Martin because I really liked filming like Fugitive of the Jadoom with her. her. Her reveal as the doctor, her outfit, everything was great. Um, but then, then later on, someone asked her, um, who's your least favorite doctor? <laughs> and she said, I can't, you can't ask me that. I'm going to get cancelled. And then she saves it by, by saying, like, none of them, none of them are, are my least favorite. And then, and it was a funny, funny audience experience because someone was, someone was there with a, um, it was at least like a young a child or a baby. So, like, every so often, like, the baby will giggle and, like, Jody would be like, that's my number one fan up there. And I think there's one moment that the, day, the baby started to cry. She's like, oh, you angel, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> But no, um, the panel the panel was great. Everything about it was fantastic. After the panel, I had to go and get one more photo, which, re- which was the original one I planned to have. I wasn't going to refund my ticket. I'm like, no, fuck it. I'll just get another photo. Why not? Like, it's straight up afterwards. So I go back. I go back in line. I see Crispy again. He has to line up in the in just general general audience general tickets. You pass him by. You're like, I'm like, ha ha, because you ha- you actually get a badge. Not only is it just a wristband, but you actually get a badge to show that you've got super Q. So I had the badge. I'm like, ha ha. Um, so and I, and you made an interview if, that day. There you go. Yes, <laughs> yes. The the two Brisbane Hootubers. That's, that'll be the next WrestleMania match. <laughs> More interesting than Logan Paul. Uh. Yes, but no. If I was, if I didn't have it, if I didn't have a time limit because I, I did, because I was there with my 
with my folks. My folks, they weren't at the convention, but they were also there in the Gold Coast. And I already oh. told them, okay, I'll be done after three o'clock and then we'll head back up, we'll head back home. So if I, if I had to stay, uh, if I, if I did stay a little, it was a little bit longer. I would have liked to have chat a bit more with Crispy, catch up with him. Uh, uh, Sean says Jody does have a two year old. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, that's true. Uh, but yes, then I went and got my last photo. Huzzah. You didn't have Ta-da. any those ideas? You didn't want to do like a back No, back. I can't. I don't. I saw a few of them had. A few people did pose ideas. Here's my question. Why didn't you wear your 14th Doctor cosplay? Um, because uh, the um, one of the clips on it broke and one of the seams is ripped. So I have to get it fixed. And I only found this out the day before I had to leave. Oh, okay. Okay. That's forgivable. I'm sorry. Yeah. I would have wore my 14th Doctor one. But no, there was a... a Cosplay wise, there was obviously a lot of people in thirteen. Uh, there was, um, I was talking to someone in the autogra- uh, the autograph queue. She made like a custom, like Tardis dress, and on on the skirt was all the doctors, like the silhouettes of all the doctors. Ooh. I'm like, oh, that's awesome! And it's, and it's like, then I, I just I just being a little cheeky, I was like, where's the Morbius doctors? And she's like, maybe next time. I'm like. Hey, considering we don't, we only really see their faces. That could work as like a really good like bracelet, their or like faces? the heads of the of like of the Morbius doctors, like just their heads on a bracelet. But yeah, there was a lot of there's yeah there was a few there was obviously yeah a lot of thirteen Doctor cosplayers. There was a couple. There's a few fourteens. There was one as Missy, I believe. There was, no there was a guy. No shooty. I don't, I don't think that I don't recall anyone in shooty um, outfits. Only shooty could pull it off. I'm afraid. That's that's fair. That's fair. That's that's that's, that's fair. That's fair. But that, that that's my story time. I got. I finally got to meet a new who doctor. Congrats. Very 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 happy. It was worth it. I think in total, autograph and the two photos came up to about almost five hundred dollars. Did she have a uh, photo op experience with her in costume? No. No? Okay. Very I think very few of them do that here. I think hmm. I don't know. I've seen sometimes I think the, only, I think the only one that kind of did it and I think that's mainly be- I don't know it, it could be because a fan had it was when Sophie Aldred was here last year because I know she, she did a few photos in the ace jacket, but I think that's because there was someone there that actually had the jacket. I so I think remember. they, I think, I think she maybe, maybe have asked, it's like, oh, could I borrow this for photos if that's fine with you? I don't, or maybe could have just been for that one person in that photo. I don't, I, I can't remember if David, uh, if David did. You know, thankfully, uh, thankfully for Peter Capaldi, he has the alternate uh, Doctor outfit, where which is just his hoodie and a T-shirt. Yeah, just, wear, just wear a hoodie. <laughs> but no, um, yeah. Sean so, uh, says she has an ace jacket of her own. It could be that one, maybe. But she wasn't. She wasn't. She definitely wasn't. Wear, she didn't wear. She didn't have. I don't think she had one. In, she didn't have one when I took a photo. She didn't. She wasn't wearing one during autographs so i i feel like it could have been just a fan's one that she asked if she could borrow or she took it off for signing because you don't want to wear a leather jacket once that's true (laughs) and it's april here it's middle of middle of autumn fall so it's kind of in that in-between point where sometimes it's hot warm sometimes it's cool so you don't know but no, overall, um, fantastic experience. Definitely worth it. Absolutely loved meeting Jodie Whittaker. No, her, her era might not be my favorite, but I don't hold that against Jodie. Jodie is, Jodie is, like I said, 
embodiment of pure joy, just pure happiness. You just see her and meet her and you just think, I could never be mad at you. There's nothing wrong with you. Like near, you're like perfect. So amazing person to me. Absolutely fantastic person to me. Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm glad you, you had such a great experience. Yes. Like, now, if I David Tennant came here, I'd probably have a heart attack. Who? If David Tennant came here, I'd, I'd have, I'd have a heart attack. I don't know. <laughs> you just have to be looking for it because I'm sure. I spent in like me, meeting like, like any celebrity. Like I, I'm just in the line waiting in time. I'll check my phone. Just check like, it's like, hey, all right. Do I have anything in my teeth? I feel like with David, I'd be like, oh no, I can't. David would be too much for you. I feel like it. Yeah. Heart <laughs> so my whole my whole list of Doctor Who actors I've met, I have now I have met I have met one classic Who, Peter Davison. And I got him to sign the five doctors. I have met Two classic companions, uh, Jeanette Fielding, Tegan, and Sophie Aldred, Ace. I've met one master, Michelle Gomez, and I've met one new Who doctor, Jodie Whittaker. There you go. Now I need to meet a new Who companion. I... Which, I, which is going to be rare. <laughs> I was going to at one point but it was right before covid and i was actually actually kind of glad because it was <laughs> it was jenna coleman i didn't want to make a fool myself i didn't want to i didn't want to go up well she doesn't after. do conventions anymore which is unfortunate she just did oh she doesn't do as many she doesn't do it anymore <laughs> Uh, I know she had like I know I know there was the, the thing that she had a bad experience so she doesn't yeah, do that, as much. That, uh, yeah, she doesn't look like she enjoys the con circuit, which I understand. It's unfortunate, but like yeah. people, people really do need to like. Yes, they are. It's like they're not really here to be your friend. No. They are here to meet everyone, and you should take a step back. Yeah, and it can be, be a normal, be a just normal, nice, decent person, okay? Parasocial relationships and shit don't work. Stop it. Yeah, yeah. Be I love Michelle Gomez, but she's not going to be my girlfriend, okay? Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I think she already has a partner, so it, that's not going to work regardless. That's, that's a... That the very specific thing that you're talking about i don't was there exactly. something that was actually known that no okay because <laughs> i'm just making was... a fake example okay i'm not don't try and twist my words you bastard i didn't make it sound you're gonna make it, it, it sound, it it make it sound like i think coolsville sucks <laughs> it wasn't me i didn't do it i swear no. But no, um, anyway, story time over. We now have to go into the bad times. No. Because for this this week's live stream, we have picked a big finish story to review. And we have decided on the 41st entry in the former Big Finish monthly adventures range. It's a fifth Doctor One, Necromantia, the infamous necromantia written by austin atkinson starring peter davison as the fifth doctor nicola bright as perry brown and carolyn caroline morris as eramim uh, eramim is a big finish exclusive companion she was i think if i recall correctly she was the second big finish exclusive because obviously we had um uh, maggie stables as as evelyn evelyn smythe for the sixth doctor so, um, going by the summary, Necromantia. In the depths of space, a little-known district harbors a terrible secret. Long known as a place of death, it claims thousands more lives as a great corporate space fleet goes to war. As the fleet screams out in fear and pain, an irresistible voice calls out to three travelers and a macabre mind 
sets a deadly trap. The Doctor, Perry, and Eremim face the terrors of Tolderan and the wrath of a corporate empire as they struggle to understand the hideous secret of the Domain of the Dead, this district known in legend as Necromantia. So yes, this came out in February of 2003. Necromantia. It really Who sucks. Wants to- it like really sucks. There, no, there, there's no like soft way to go into it. This story is just not one interesting. It's it's weighed down by the, the, that that fact for one, and then every character outside of it. Not Shada because you said it's the other Shada, but it's Shada. Not that, that makes it any better. Makes it feel even more like a knockoff. Uh, it's just such a sucky story that you're... I had to work the entire week. I listened and started this every day for a week trying to get through it. I forced myself to be up and moving and walking because otherwise I was going to go insane. Yeah, um... Just like the fifth doctor stuck in a cricket match over and over and over again. God! Yeah. So, before I go into my thoughts, so, for those who don't know, Necromantia is infamous for a reason, and that's because um, it was not uh, received well by fans due, uh, going by the wiki here, due to the disrespectful treatment towards the female companions, the attempted, not going to say the word, yep. rhymes with grape, of Eremim, whether the attempt is successful is left ambiguous, and the witches of Sharda tearing the doctor's head off and feasting on his body. Uh, Peter Davison's distaste for the story caused him to request Big Finish never again hire Austin Atkinson to write for his doctor, which worked. This is Austin Atkinson's only Big Finish story. He then went on to do um, The Reign of Terror. He was the director and producer of the animated episodes of The Reign of Terror, so that's a weird jump. <laughs> but no yeah um for me um i listened to the story today because i totally forgot we were going to do necromantia and i had to mm-hmm. ask pixel what were we doing i, I can't remember i know it's big finish but what were we doing and it's like necromantia the bad one it's like oh yeah that's right damn it yeah. so I, I listened to it today all of it i listened to it in one one go because I had other things I need to do before the stream. I could honestly tell you, I cannot remember anything. Oh, well, that's... I, that's apart from the... Even even the controversial stuff that happens in the story, I cannot remember any of, any of Necromantia because it is such a boring story. God. It is so bland. It is such a nothing burger of a story. Even if the con- even if those controversial stuff w- wasn't in it, it would still be a bad story. Yeah. It is it it is such a drag to listen to this story. I don't know who approved it. I felt like I feel like someone should have like script editor whoever should have done multiple like reads of this to be like. Actually, you know, we're going to pass on this one. Um, can, yeah. can We'll get someone else, or can you write something better? Granted, I'm not a writer. I would like to write something one day. I just don't have the time <laughs> to do it. Yeah. And I'm, I, I'm I very really notorious. Like I'm very notorious for myself of coming up with ideas, but just not exploring it or actually developing it into something. I probably, on my computer, have, like, have like hundreds of work doc- documents of just ideas for a story of something, and then that's just it. Not even like attempting to write a draft. That's it. Just so I can't speak on like how how writing works or, or being a writer, but I I feel like if I was a script editor or whoever and I read this story, I would have been like, nope. Yeah. No. Rewrite this. Really- or we get someone else. Um, just, just so Ashan says uh, Peter Blacklisted write it. Yep, it's his, it's his only story. It's one of two stories I've gained one. I've given one out of ten of hundreds of big finish. I'm interested in hearing what the second one is. Um, I slept through most of it. And I still know that it is dreadful. Yeah, I listened to this today. 
you could quiz me on Necromantia and I would fail. Yeah, yeah. Because- I honestly, aside from the fact that a cat saves the day, I cannot remember anything. Freaking cat. Frickin I cannot remember a single thing about this story. It is such a boring drag of a story. I have no... I don't know if, if it's because, well, Doctor Who's not on telly anymore, so we can kind of get away with some things, but, like, I would not I would not have okayed this story. No, it's... I really do feel like this is the worst Big Finish story I've ever listened to. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty freaking terrible. It is, it's so, it's so, the other one is Army of Death. What's Army of Death? That sounds familiar. I'm going to look that up. You know that, uh, that one family guy, guy clip where uh, Quagmire is telling uh, Brian why he doesn't like him? Yeah. And he ends it all with, but that's not, I can forgive all that. The worst part is, <laughs> you're boring. <laughs> I could forgive everything if you weren't such a bore. <laughs> okay. Um, Feel that. Army of Death. Army of Death is the last Eighth Doctor and Mary Shelley story. I haven't listened to that. I've only listened to the Silver Turk, and I really liked Silver Turk. But I haven't listened to the other two stories. So you reckon that one is also a one out of ten? Oh, well, that's pretty bad. Jason, well, Aaron, not, that's as bad as you can go. You can't give something a zero. Just like stats and Fallout, you have to have one. Let's let's see. Like, what else has Jason Arnup wrote in? The Demons of the of Red Lodge and Yes, it did Dominion. I kinda liked Dominion. That's the um seventh doctor and it it, intru- it introduced um Alex McQueen's master. Bald Bald Master. I liked Dominion. It's not like the best story ever, but I, I liked Dominion. Uh Demons of the Red Lodge, I I have listened to that. I cannot tell you anything about it. It's been so long since I've listened to that story, so. But you at least enjoyed it more than Necromantia, because Necromantia is such a terrible, terrible experience. You know, I was hoping kind of that there was at least something redeemable about it, but there's nothing. There is absolutely nothing. You you know what's the one redeemable thing is that Perry has one of those minor slips her accent there was like she she was trying to say another but she slipped into another and i was like oh that's nice that's the only thing about this story that i can really tell you other than that and shara not shara tricked me he said shara shara Shara, yeah oh my god and if i have more of this yeah those witches go ahead and speak oh god gag me with a spoon um i don't even think we should bother with ratings i, th- I think we're both no. gonna agree one out bad. of ten it's so bad it's so bad it's, it's so bad. bottom of the barrel Do Con- you, controversial st- controversial stuff and i feel like it i feel like that it just like edgy for the sake of being edgy because it's edgy for the sake of being edgy and it's not it's also to the point, like you said, you can't even remember it. You can't even you can't even remember it. So it's it's there, and it's not for. There's no edge to the edge. It's something that's. Ugh, ugh, it's yeah. Just, so all that around. it being a boring story. It's so bland. Oh my god! Okay. Forgetful. Like holy sh- this real yeah this honestly could be oh that is such that is such a dip in quality the story right before this is jubilee, jubilee. Oh. holy shit so if you back in the day listening to the monthly monthly range you went from like the highest of highs <laughs> with jubilee <laughs> to, bottom to right down the fucking bottom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, holy shit. This is the equivalent the equivalent of this. The equivalent of this would be if you watched if like in the TV show, if you went from 
Heaven Sent, straight to Legend of the Sea Devils. Okay. Yeah. That's that. I'd feel like that would be the equivalent. You go from something like Heaven Sent, and then the next episode is like Legend of the Sea Devils. Hey, hey, don't offend at least the concept of pirate sea devils by comparing. I, I, to that. I'm not saying pirate sea devils is a, is a stupid idea. It's just the story. It, it's really cut. The, the story is just not good, and it was very obviously cut to bits. Yeah. No. No. I I agree. But I'm still saying this is a worse story. Uh, than no, I'm, that's yeah. Uh, Jubilee is sandwiched between uh, Bang Bang and Boom and Necromantia. I've not listened to Bang Bang and Boom. I'm guessing that's not a good story. I know that's a um, that's Seventh Doctor and Mel story with a name like that. Bang Bang a Boom. But uh, that that yeah. that's that's wild to me. That the story directly before this was Jubilee, like. Uh, Bang Bang and Boom is Doctor Who doing Eurovision. Three out of ten for me. Oh. Mm. Yeah. I haven't listened to it yet. I haven't listened to a lot of Seven Doctor um, stuff recently. I haven't listened to a lot recently, but I should get to it. Get back to it. What do you do while you paint? I just what, either like I put shows on or listen to why, podcasts. Why don't you listen to Big Finish? I probably should. I still need to listen to the most recent um, uh, Fifth Doctor one, Dream Team. Yeah. I, I was I'm, so going into it, I was wondering, okay. How bad could this be, given the controversy? Fifth Doctor, some of the stories aren't that great. They're like, they're really like, that's not a good one. That's not a good one. This is bad. This is really bad. I mean, going from going with the monthly range... Uh, yeah, going with the monthly range, a lot of people don't particularly talk about his stories with Perry and Araman. Like, a lot of his stuff with Nyssa is, like, okay to good. Yeah. Uh, Ishan says some Tarans versus uh, Rutin's finale was great. I've That's another thing I need to listen to because I need to see how I've it all fucking wraps up. I finished the first two stories. I liked them both uh, well enough, but I'm going into the Sixth Doctor story. But you know why I couldn't get into the Sixth Doctor story? Because I had to listen to frickin' Necromantia. So, another reason for me to despise this story. Uh, Sean said the murder. murder, murder this is your uh, fault. Yeah, you're yeah. welcome. Uh, the Merfolk murder is the highlight out of it. Uh, and the Dream Team. I'm excited. I've I've liked the previous two um, Fifth Doctor Adventures box sets, so I'm excited to for Dream Team. Anything it could it could it be any worse than Necromantia? No, it can't be. I don't think there's much that can be. So I think this is a first. Our first it one out of ten. So bad, so freaking bad. Not even the worst. Not even the worst classic Who story could be this bad no it cat it categorically cannot be worse i know exactly <laughs> i know and i give survival a when really I, hard when time I, but no because when i think of like boring classic who my go-to is colony in space until the master gets there it's such a boring story but but that at least has a highlight to you this has no highlight this there's no nothing highlight. redeemable about this story and yep that's that's our show that's it <laughs> that's our show we're ending on such a low note we went from a great conversation with you all hyped up we went from jubilee to necromantia in the course yeah we, yeah my my notes. my my meeting of jody was the jubilee and then we went to, literally went to necromantia hate hate this um it happened to it would have happened eventually uh sean says colin in space is also my least favorite classic group. yeah i could never understand people being like oh yeah colin in space is like a good story i'm like no it's not it's so boring until the master gets there i can't remember enough about it off the top of my head it's the it's the first it's the first um it's te te I think it's technically the first non-Earth story 
but it's still during the whole Doctor's exile. Oh, the Time Lord sent them. Did we the review it? Yeah, we did do it. I think I and gave that's it a higher said, that's, when, that's, when I, that's when I said, yeah, this story is boring. I don't know how people could say, like, Colony in Space is, like, a, a decent story. It's not. I can't, I honestly just can't remember enough about it's it. It's not even bad. It's just boring. Yeah, it's not even, yeah, it's not, yeah, Colony in Space is not a bad episode. It's just boring. Unlike Necromantia, which is bad and boring. It's both. Necromantia is both. Badoring. <laughs> Badoring. <laughs> Bar barring? <laughs> Bearing. Bearing. Like B A O. <laughs> Bowering. I think that's no. enough. But now, now I'm intrigued to, to listen to Army of Death. If Ashan says that's the other one out of ten that you've given for a big finish story, well, when that's, you that's go paint your minis tonight. Well, no, on. not tonight. I'm sorry. I'll put I'll put it on while I'm playing Hell Divers or something. I, I don't am know. Going to go see Spider Man tomorrow. So I have a good, good. Oh yeah, you've got the whole like. It was at the Raimi. Like, yeah, it's back in the theaters, films. boy. My first movie experience that I remember is seeing Spider Man Two on the big screen. That's the first movie I ever remember. It is my everything, and I am so excited next week to see it. I will see it. I have to see it. And then I get to go see Spider Man Three the following week. That's enough out of us. Let's end this. That 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 film is just iconic because of memes. I know, I know. It's not, it's, it's not it's still. It, it is still the weakest of the three. Weakest. I would but... really, I would, I would really say it's bad, but it's it's, it's, it's messy. It, it's messy. it's an enjoyable mess. It's very enjoyable. It's a very, it's a very clear. Still, yeah, that's this is not what they wanted to do. <laughs> still ticked off about that whole new goblin thing. When I was a kid, I couldn't stand that. I was like, "Why are you doing the new? Why would you do this? He's supposed to be the next green goblin. You don't, you don't give him this little weird mask and say this is good enough." <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Like that's it. that's it for this week's stream. Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Come back for next week. We don't know what it is. Will we have news? I don't know. The world may never know, but we're close. So very, very, very close to new Doctor Who. It's going to be back for eight weeks in a row. One more month. Get ready. One more. Oh, seven weeks in a row. One more month. One more. Seven weeks in a row, because we'll technically have the first two episodes at first. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that, but that's mainly a Disney thing. Disney does that a lot with some of their shows that would just get put two out, which I feel Ooh, like for Amazon some, does it too. Amazon, yeah, Amazon does it too. But at least with Disney, it's like okay. I think we talked about this before, but like. The show that really needed both episodes to come out at the same time was Andor. WandaVision also needed that too. Eh, it's been a while since I've watched WandaVision, so I can't really say. WandaVision, WandaVision. Anyway, good night, everybody. See you next time. Alonzi! Don't say it.